Will you stand and worship with us?
first moved up here, it was March 2020, it was two weeks before COVID started. We came up here with the promises of two jobs at a company up in Carmel. And we moved up here, we spent all of our savings to move here, and two weeks later, we were out of a job. We were crushed, we were devastated, as you would be in that situation. Didn't know what we were gonna do. But God always provides. He provided us a way out of that, but in that time of crushing devastation, I was driving in the car, listening to Spotify, I don't know what it, and Casting Crowns came on. I don't know if you this, know this song, Praise You in the Storm. Raise your hand if you know that song. Everybody loves Casting Crowns, I know it. So church, I wanna sing a little bit of that song together because this song, in the times of suffering and crushing devastation, has always been an encouragement to me. So let's sing this together. And I'll praise you in the storm And I will lift my hands You are who you are No matter where I am And every tear I cry You hold it in your hand You never left my side And though my heart is torn Praise you in the storm. Let's sing that one more time. And though my heart is told, I will praise you in the storm. Amen.
You know, it's like someone says, hey, you know, let's go for a walk. I don't feel like it. You know, let's go out with some friends. I don't feel like it. You know, after it stops raining, let's go roll around in the mud and make mud angels. I don't feel like it. I mean, I don't know why anybody wouldn't feel like that. I mean, that would be awesome, right? But sometimes we just don't feel like it. We don't want to do what maybe would make us happy or even be a good thing, but we just, you know, I don't feel like it. We've all been there. Something we should do would benefit us or someone else would benefit from us, might even bring us joy. And we say, I don't feel like it. Yeah. Well, uh, today we're going to be doing something that we might not always feel like doing, but it ultimately generates us in us a feeling that we'll really enjoy. Uh, so last week we started our series, Anxious About Nothing, and we pulled out a, a theme verse for uh, the series from Philippians chapter 4. Let, let me just remind you uh, of that, that verse. It says this, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And, and so here's Paul languishing in prison, and he gives these very practical steps on how we can uh, choose joy and be anxious for nothing. So that was the first thing he said, is praise your way to peace by choosing joy. Pray your way to peace by choosing prayer. And then thank your way to peace by choosing gratitude. And so I want to unpack those three over the next three weeks, and we're going to start with that very first one, praise your way to peace. Now, sometimes, how, how, would you admit that sometimes you walk in here and it's a worship service and we're going to sing praise songs and you really want to say, yeah, I don't feel like it. You know, because sometimes that's the way it is. You know, it, it, it's not like we're going through this celebratory time in our life. I mean, maybe you're walking through a valley and, and you're like, I'm here because I'm just hoping that you got something for me. But I really don't feel like praising the Lord. Well, it's interesting, let me take you today to a passage from King David's life. It's Psalm 34. If you've got a Bible or a device with the Bible on it, you might even want to turn there and, and, and follow along with this because it's an interesting um, explanation to all of us of how whether we feel like it or not, we can actually praise our way into peace. You see, King David is on the run. Uh, King Saul is out to kill him for no other reason than he was just jealous of him. And so he's trying to run him down. David's trying to figure out how to hide from him. And he ends up in this area called Gath. And he's trying to stay pretty incognito there. But some servant recognizes him. And he says, hey, isn't that David, you know, where Saul killed thousands, but David killed ten thousands? And he knew he'd been exposed. And so he had to run to this cave called Adullam to avoid the king of Gath, Achis, who had a, a, a pact with King Saul. So he gets there and he hides in this cave and all of a sudden a bunch of other people who are loyal to him, like his family and some of his army guys, show up. They find out where he is and they hide in the cave with him because they're loyal to him and want to fight for him. So here they are, 401 people hiding in a, a, a dark, a dry cave it's not comfortable at all. And in this cave, in this experience, David writes Psalm 34. Now, that's what I would do, right? You know, I'm hanging out in a cave with all my bros, and they're, we're being chased. I'm a little scared. So why don't we go songwriting at this moment? I mean, and so he writes it as an acrostic. In other words, every line of the psalm starts with a letter of the Hebrew alphabet except one. Except one. And probably he did this because he wanted them to memorize it and actually sing it with him in the cave. Now, it's interesting, running for their lives, that's the picture, hiding in fear, hiding in panic due to a major threat to their life. I mean, I have to ask you the question, what's your response? What do you do then? I mean, a lot of us, we just go fetal position, right? You know, cry a little bit, you know, and worry about it, and, and then, you know, God, it, it, you know, hopefully you can do something with this, and, and, and we're scared. Here's what David did with it. Psalm 34, we're just going to tackle the first four verses today. I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak his praises. I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. 
Let us exalt his name together. I prayed to the Lord, and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. So here we are, from a dark, dry cave of injustice and threat and questioning, David consoles himself and his team by writing a song. And here's why. Because praise not only comes from a heart of joy, it creates joy. And it's important that we get that. We don't just praise because life is great and God is awesome, but we also praise because we need to. And it will create within us something perhaps we never thought we would feel when we don't feel like it. So I will praise the Lord, he says, at all times. Not just when all is great and the the kingdom is blessed, but I'm going to praise him when I'm running from him, hiding in a cave with 400 of my best friends. Now, last week we talked about the word rejoice. And you may remember rejoice is the verb to expressing the joy that's within you. So this is what his call is to all of us. And this is David's strategy when the situation is dire and complicated and precarious. So instead of following or allowing fear, negativity, and pessimism to control his attitude, he takes action in an unnatural way. Because what, what do we like to do? We like to pity party, right? You know, don't we? We, like to, we, we, we default to complaining. And, and that's what we do. And so we find somebody to commiserate with us, and, and then you know, we let our attitude just go down to tubes. And David refused to allow that to happen. I mean, put yourself in that cave with David and become part of his ragtag band of men and watch him lead you out of despair into hope, into joy, as you begin to sing this psalm that he's now writing in the cave and teaching you so that you can create joy from expressing joy. He wants them to memorize and intentionally sing praise because praise is their way to peace in the midst of this struggle. Now, I've, I've just wondered this, this is sort of a sidebar, this part's free. I wonder if it dawned on him that we'd all be reading his song 3,000 years later. I mean, that's amazing when you think about it. What he meant to encourage and calm himself and his men, we're now reading and singing the same thing, so it helps us. The fact is, this strategy is having the same results today with the same song today as David intended for it 3,000 years ago in the cave. See, it, it, praise not only comes from joy, it creates joy. He reflected on the goodness and faithfulness of God, and he says, at all times. I'm not waiting for the tide to turn before I start praising God. I'm going to praise him just because he deserves it. I'm going to honor him because all of his character and nature is worthy of me, this little BB of his imagination, giving it to him. So so it's interesting. I'm not going to leave that joy in my mind and in my heart and say, yeah, yeah, praise the Lord. But he says, I'm going to put it on my mouth. I'm going to make sure I declare it publicly to all of my friends, to everyone around me. This is who I am. Now, right, my, right now in this place, I might be looking at a bunch of cave dwellers. I mean, there might be people in this room today I'm looking at that are going through a very difficult time. You know, maybe it's some kind of health crisis. Maybe there's a broken relationship. Maybe you're having financial problems. Maybe you don't know the answer to some big question that's before you, and you're anxious about it. And you're in the cave wondering what to do. Well, here's step one. You can create joy by expressing joy, whether you feel like it or not. You see, it's interesting. Maybe you would prefer that I commiserate with you, and I sit down and we cry together. And you know what? That's a great thing. We should do that with, for each other. You know, be there for each other, listen to each other, cry together. I mean, try our best to, to be empathetic and feel what others are going through. Absolutely. But at some point, we have to take hold of the problem and choose joy. Because just being depressed about it, just being sad about it, just continually thinking of the negative of it isn't going to move us to the next level in our faith walk with God. So he's saying choose praise. Choose to first sing in your heart 
and then sing with your mouth. You know, our praise songs that we sing here, they're not just for Sunday. I mean, those are songs we want you to know and memorize and take with you throughout the week so when the storms come, you can battle them with the joy that you can express through the songs or the prayers that we pray. It's interesting, Micah mentioned that song, Praise You in the Storm. The, the story is that Erin Browning was a young girl that Casting Crowns Mark Hall found out about that had cancer. And the truth is, he, it, when they met each other, she was really impressed with him, and actually she was doing a dance for some kind of school play or, or school uh, talent contest and chose one of the Casting Crowns songs to do it with. So she loved the band. And when she had the opportunity to meet them, she told her story, her mom told her story, and Mark decided to start writing a song about her. But not much about Aaron, but about her mother who was going through this storm with her. And how her mom handled it. And, and how, how he watched her praise him in the midst of the storm. Now, Aaron died before the song was finished. But they finished it and Casting Crowns recorded it and it has helped millions of people all over the world who've heard that song. Here's just that little, that little chorus. And I'll praise you in the storm and I will lift my hands for you are who you are no matter where I am. See, no matter what you're going through, God is still God. And he is still worthy of your worship. He's still worthy of your joy. He's still worthy of your praise. But it was interesting because Mark, Mark said this as he reflected upon writing the song and watching Aaron's mom go through it until Aaron ultimately died. Mark said, watching her walk through a real storm showed me that my worship was extremely situational. Situational. You see, I don't want to be a situational worshiper. I don't want you to be a situational worshiper. I want you to worship God because you know you need to. I want you to worship God because you have this opportunity to glorify the creator of all things. And he actually pays attention to you. This is the privilege you have. And when you do it, you don't have to wait till you feel joy to express joy. Because praising him, even when you don't feel like it, creates joy within you. I'm going to praise my way to joy. But look, I just want you to know, I, I at least am, I'm searching for more than just a feeling of joy. And, and that's great, but I want to go even deeper in my connection to God and what he has for my life. So David doesn't stop there with just verse 1. He didn't write with just one letter of the Hebrew alphabet. He kept going. And look at verse 2. I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. Because that, that's what he really wanted to encourage all of his people in the cave with him, as well as himself. Praise brings confidence to help the helpless. And, and, and this is, again, what are we talking about? Rejoice, remember? Rejoice, celebrating, communicating our joy to the Lord and praising him for he's worthy. It, the story of David and going to Gath and, and his co uh, encounter with King Achish and, and, and all of that is found in 1 Samuel 21 and 22. Good story to read this afternoon in between your nap and uh, Sunday night football. So as I said before, some servant exposed David's identity by quoting the people praising him. Saul has killed his thousands, but David has killed his ten thousands. And David could have focused on his fans and thought to himself, that's right, I'm David, I'm bad. I killed Goliath, I killed a bunch of armies, I'm all that. I'm anointed by God to be king of the... He could have done that, but that's not what he did. He didn't try to motivate the people in the cave with a locker room speech. No, he motivated them with personal praise to God, not to himself. In the cave hiding, he didn't try to get, their, get his guys to run through a wall for him. Instead, he focused on the Lord. He said, I'm not going to boast in myself. I'm going to boast in the Lord. The point is, you need to get your eyes off of yourself conquering your situation. Because that's what a lot of people want us to do. They say, you can do whatever you want to do. 
I just want you to know, I don't see one person in here that's going to play in the NBA whether you want to or not. Not one of you. I'm sorry, a couple of you are like shocked right now. But no. But this is the whole, whole point. It's that in this, you declare who it is you serve, who it is you live for, who it is you worship. And whether you think I got this or we got this, the most important thing you need to think is that he's got this. And, and, and that's just it. That the, the way we pray is always to somehow come to some relief or everything's going to turn out great and it's going to be 72 degrees and sunny all the time. And that's how we pray. And if God doesn't deliver that kind of result, then somehow we feel like maybe there's something wrong with his prayer answerer. But he's saying, no, no, what I'm all about in my prayers is staying faithful to the God who made me. That's the goal of my prayers, that no matter what I'm walking through, no matter what cave I'm hiding in, I want to be faithful to the God who made me, loved me, died for me, rose from the dead, and saved me from my sin. This is what the goal of our prayers is. Put yourself, weak or strong, behind the character and nature of God. And in that, you will find your help when you feel helpless. Ultimately, now, I, I just want to be clear. David didn't stay in the cave the rest of his life just singing this song. He and his men knew they eventually had to get out of the cave and be confronted by or confront their enemies. They ultimately couldn't hide there forever. They had to ultimately take action. And that's what he's preparing them for. He, because of praise, because of declaring his worship and allegiance to the Lord, they went out of that cave with confidence. The helpless, facing incredible odds before them, went in the name of the Lord, having praised him for who he is. And David knew his situation was helpless, but not hopeless. He could not win in his own power. But it was in singing the song, I will boast only in the Lord, let those who are helpless take heart, that he was able to take himself and his men from fear to faith, from helplessness to incredible courage. You know, I was reading again this past week a book by C.S. Lewis on joy, and he was talking about in his younger days when his mother passed away and the immense depression that he went through during that experience. So discouraged by the loss of his mom, his faith was rocked. And especially, he said, as he watched his father emotionally crumble and stumble through that experience. But later, as he worked through the emotions into his adulthood, he processed his faith around it. And listen, this is what C.S. Lewis said. If you want to get warm, you must stand near the fire. If you want to be wet, you must get into the water. If you want joy, power, peace, eternal life, you must get close to or even into the thing that has them. I mean, if you're walking around in despair and you only hang out with people who are in despair or you don't get yourself around people who ultimately are expressing what your goal is in your prayers, then you're not going to find it. But immerse yourself in that very thing that gives you help. And that is praise, rejoice, expressing joy. If you're full of sadness and loss and, and regret and you desire a change of spirit, Go do it. Choose and express joy. Now, the psalms we read and songs we sing are all tools to empower you, to help you move from despair to hope. I mean, that's what ultimately we want for ourselves, and, and we want that for others. It's what I want for you today. For whatever it is that's causing you angst or causing you to feel anxious, I want you to experience the peace of God even as you walk through that challenge. And again, it's not a locker room pep talk. It is a real proven strategy to help you that comes from the Holy Spirit-inspired Word of God. I mean, I didn't make this stuff up. I'm just sharing it with you, encouraging you to change your perspective on life because you now see the God you praise and find help from him as you celebrate his glory and his goodness. But here's the thing, you don't have to do that in a vacuum. Look at verse 3. 
Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. You see, praise with others brings strength from others. Others are very important in your life. Notice how the song shifts from I will to let us. He's declaring his own testimony first, but then he's putting it all together for his band of followers who are hiding in the cave with him. Come let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. You see, David wasn't alone in that cave. His family, his loyal followers, as I said, 400 of them. This wasn't just another journal entry among David's amazing Psalms compilation. It wasn't just David's greatest hits. This is David saying, we will find our help as we together declare the glory of God. He was using this strategy to encourage himself and his entire team, and they were praising together. Now, we find a great deal of strength when we come together with other Christ followers and believers. And, you know, it's interesting, it's, it's, it's not unprecedented that we do that. If you open up the book of Acts in the Bible and you read it from start to finish, every time you see these Christ followers under intense persecution or beatings or threats or imprisonment, Anytime they can, the first thing that they do is come find the other believers. They get together with others who are part of the body of Christ, who they know will pray with them and for them and worship with them, and it'll give them the strength they need to stay faithful to the Christ that they follow and the mission that he's put them on. That's all happening in the body of Jesus Christ. Now, The praise with others brought strength from others means that there are a lot of reasons we come together in this place. We come for worship, we come to study God's word, we we come to do acts of service, we come to eat donuts, all very spiritual things. But here's the thing. If we choose to praise with others, our spirits are lifted up. We're encouraged, we're empowered to stay faithful in the struggle because we're all in this struggle, and we need each other. We can be anxious for nothing because we're sharing one another's burdens. We're walking this road together. And because we bring truth and hope to one another. I mean, we've already done that this morning. We've already sung the songs of praise and honored God with them, and it does something in our minds and in our spirits. If we get outside of ourselves for just a moment, pass on the response of, I don't feel like it, and we give ourselves over to this worship opportunity. David's approach is our approach. We praise our way to peace together. Together. We choose joy together express joy together, and are encouraged by the joy being expressed by others. I'll never forget when I first decided to become a follower of Jesus. I did it at a camp that no one else in my town went to. No one from my school went there. And so I came home all fired up about this new faith, but I had not one single Christ follower friend in my life. I didn't even know who the Christ followers were in my school, so I came back to, to this, I, I decided that I was going to personally convert every one of my friends. And that was their response too. You know, and, and, and they mocked me and laughed at me. And it was a very lonely experience. And it was discouraging. And, and I think, you know, as I grew up, there, were different, there have been different places in my life where that's happened to me as well. So it wasn't just in my young life, but perhaps all of you can talk about that as well. When you're around people who don't share your passion for following Jesus, that it can be a lonely, discouraging place to live. And that's why we need this space. That's why we need each other. I'm just going to tell you, I need you. I need you. And like it or not, as much as you don't want to, you need me. And you need each other. And I find myself all the time being encouraged by you. I find myself all the time being taught by you. And trust me, none of you uh, have any trouble correcting me whenever you want to. But that's all a good thing. 
Because we're in this journey as his people together. It's the body. And we gain so much from one another, especially when we're walking through loneliness or sadness or anxiousness, to know that we can move from that anxiousness to peace as we praise the Lord together. Now, this entire psalm, this whole Psalm 34, truly is amazing. And if I was going to unpack the whole thing for you today, I'd have had to have you bring lunch and dinner. I mean, it's, it's huge. But I encourage you to go home today and read it, the whole psalm. And you'll find great strength from knowing now the reality of David writing this in a dark, dry dungeon of a cave. And when you think that he was able to have that kind of spirit within him in his most difficult circumstance, praising the Lord. But look what he says in verse 4. I prayed to the Lord, and he answered me, and here it is, and he freed me from all my fears. Now, again, I mean, I know, you know, people say, you know, you shouldn't give people goals that they can't reach. I'm just telling you what David said, anointed by the Holy Spirit. He freed me from all my fears. The more I praised him, the more I see who he is, the more I recognize and meditate upon that which he's trying to do in my life, then I begin to recognize that I don't need to be anxious for anything. I get it. That's easy for me to say, right? I don't really feel like it, right? But the whole point is, he wants you to experience peace in the midst of every trial. And just like last week, we saw practical, positive, powerful results from the intentional expression of joy. David makes it clear, when you intentionally choose joy, when you intentionally take action to praise God, it leads you to confidence in your praying. That's why, I mean, if you would come on Tuesday nights online on Zoom to our global prayer experience, southlandchurch.org, just hit global prayer experience and join us. Every single night starts with praise. We're praising the Lord for who he is. When we move into prayers that are led, uh, it starts with praise. It ends with praise. We're thanking God in advance for his answers to prayer. He deserves all of that. That's why we pray that way to get our eyes on who he is. And in your praying, you find, here it is, peace. The ability to be anxious for nothing. Now, more next on praying your way to peace next week, but today David shows us, God's word shows us. You can praise your way to peace. You can choose joy in your life and express it. You don't have to wait until you feel like it. As a matter of fact, the more you do it, the more you will feel like it. You can praise your way to peace in your heart. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I don't have the first idea of what people in this room or online are experiencing in their life right now, what challenges are before them, what things make them worry but you know, and you are perfectly capable of bringing comfort and strength and help to the helpless. And so I'm asking you, Lord, in this moment that your Holy Spirit would awaken within each one of us complete confidence in who you are and how much you love us, and that we can be empowered to navigate any struggle with your help. So help men and women right now in this moment give over their anxiousness, their worries to you, to trust you with them. Help them to praise you in the storm. Go ahead, you pray your own prayer. Whatever it is you brought today, whatever burden is heavy, just give that to him. Cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. You pray.
And so, Lord, I get it. it. It's not our natural default to praise when we're struggling and worried. So I pray you would put it on our hearts as our weapon against fear, our weapon against anxiety, our weapon against discouragement. Lord Jesus, remind us that we have so much to be joyful about, and then help us to express it. And when we do, Lord, we pray you would give us the peace you've promised. We'll trust you in the wonderful, healing, helpful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, all right, I've told you to do it, so let's stand and let's praise him. Let's give him joy, whether you feel like it or not.
those of you with us online, thanks so much for always being here with us, even when you can't be here in person, although, man, I wish you were here right now with us celebrating. Um, but come back next week. Bring people with you. Come here or stay online, but just let people know it's happening. Stick around for just a minute as Nate talks a little bit more about how you can respond to what you experienced in worship today here at Southland. God bless you. Go live the joy and create joy because you express it. Have a great week.